Hello viewers, welcome to another beautiful edition of Trap Talk. I remain your girl Ara Nimi. We're here to inform, inspire, educate, promote the large community of entrepreneurs, CEOs, billionaires, change leaders in diverse sectors across Africa. Today we'll be taking you to the world of fashion and we are here at the Konye Fashion House owned by a set of twins actually, Mr. Peter Okonye and Mr. Paul David. You're welcome, Mr. Peter and Mr. Paul Okonye. Trip Africa. Imagine more. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Alright, so, so how have you been? Has everything been with the whole situation of things right now? Well, uh, we thank God that um, this past 10 years in this industry has taught us a lot and has helped us to prepare for times like this. Mm. And um, we are toughened and we're not backing down. We've seen worse times and um, because of the desire and the passion for this uh, for this industry that kept us afloat and has sustained our business so far. Alright, so tell us about what you do basically. Tell us about the Konye brand. Konye brand came out from Royce and Rain. Okay. The brand name used to be Royce and Rain. That's a French word for kings and queens. So that was what it is till um, last year, late last year, no mid last year, when we branded to Konye. Now the thing is that we've been doing a lot of uh, we've been doing a lot of shows internationally, and um, we get these questions that where are you guys from, you know. So we have to explain why we're using a French name for our brand, and we are not French. So we wanted to have an indigenous brand with of African origin. So the next way to go is to coin out Konye from our son name. Because of course it's looking like a family business as it is. It's really creative. Yeah, so we just took out the O and that's Konye. So basically Konye started about ten years ago as it is. So as it is now fashion. Fashion came from inner desire to look good. We've been that way from our university days. We've always been stylish in school. Came out of school, we got a nine to five while he was doing business. And um, again, while at work, of course, I always look fly. I look very, very good, to be honest. <laughs> and uh, people who like to know. Now, it's now stylist. Who is your, now you ask now, who is your stylist? Back then, there was nothing like that. Uh, I don't think there were stylist entrepreneur at that time. You just say, okay, how do you dress? How do you piece your looks together? How do you, because I used to work in the park then. So, you get all those questions. And also, um, like I said, uh, I'm a creative person. I'm an artist by birth. And uh, even while we were in school, I used to Girl, paint. sketch out my designs, my clothes, give to the tailor to try to achieve these designs, but they never get it right. Mm. They never get it, they never interpret it the way mm. I would like it to. Uh, and aside of that, I was also a painter, I paint landscape. So most of our inspiration, or most of the inspiration, comes from those acts that I already imagined that mm. I put them down, put it on clothes and I start. So um, basically, when I was still doing the 95, I enrolled somewhere to learn how to at least make clothes for myself. Because that was the original uh, reason. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make clothes for myself. And I started rocking these clothes. And again, I started this, this, this whole question start uh, coming again. Where did you get your clothes from? These clothes are different. These clothes are unique. We never saw it as a business. We never thought that. Because back in the day, very, very few designers stood up for us. Very few designers in Nigeria actually successful in the trade so we didn't even see all that we didn't even see see them until we stumbled into 
one of them and see how well he was doing in fashion. So we took our time to, I took my time to understudy him from a distance to see why he's so much sought after and why he's this pricey and also why he's this good because his, his design has so much creativity, so much art. He's practically, he's actually my mentor. So I kind of understood him more over time and uh, and see and understand why is is this pricey. So people want to wear what I'm wearing at all cost or at any cost. So we actually started a premium brand because it was not the it was not it was not the hustle. The, the idea was not to sell. The well, idea sell. was just to so make a very good few clothes. people at that time wanted to wear the things we were so we put a price tag on it and of course we also were not even charging what a regular tailor would charge we just went all the way up just as much as possible to discourage you from buying it and if you must buy it you have to pay for it so eventually i left the job so it was now already we already started making money from fashion while i was selling the bank so eventually, I left my nine to five, and we all focused on fashion. So that's what has brought us this far. Okay, so, so whose idea was it to actually start this? The fashion as a business, yes. or yes. it was it was a structured business. That idea came from me as a structured okay. business. So, what's the mission and the core values of Konya Brand? First of all, the, the mission is to make carefully created. Okay art pieces that has um, style and simplicity with highest quality fabrics. Our core values are COIL, C-O-I-L, competence, open-mindedness, integrity, and loyalty. I can take the whole day to explain all this, but let's move on. <laughs> Alright, yeah. so I know that along the line probably while you were starting up there were probably some challenges or some downsides what are these downsides that you've had in your journey so far okay uh when when when, exactly when we started we had a fashion designer that we look up to mm -hmm. and we read somewhere in this interview and he was complaining about electricity you know poor electricity and all that but we started with like a manual machine that we don't need electricity and uh, the iron was uh, with coal okay so when it was complained back then we were like ah, what do you need uh, you are complaining too much about electricity and all that you know about this business so but like one or two years down the line you know the the client base began to grow increased and so the need for industrial machines came the need for industrial irons came came Competent about tailors. competent tailors oh. you know those were the challenges that now hit us and we had to look for uh, solutions to these problems especially electricity we 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 now devised a strategy by um, training people training people take from you know from scratch most of the people that were trading came in for free but more like a community service also so we bring them we train them for free then employ them okay some of them are loyal some stay we have for nine years. you know we have we told that we with us for nine years you know and seven five you know some stay some go but you know in the long run because of gratitude some of them they feel like they owe us to stay Okay, when, when you take care of them like we do, uh, you know, to the best of our ability or to the best of how the company's finances are, they, you know, they, 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 they stay. So that's how we were able to surpass that challenge of having competent uh, workforce. Yeah. Alright, so how do, you get, how do you get ideas to create your designs? Like I said, yeah, very, very. Like I said most of the ideas are at... Um, Coincidentally, our mentor is an artist. So we we took that from him. 
we took that inspiration from him. Also, like I said earlier on, I'm a painter. I paint art as well. So those artistic inspirations I get, instead of you to put it on canvas, I put it on clothes. I make my fabrics, the canvas. I express all those things on the clothes. And again also, for, um, we still borrow some Western ideas from in all around the world, not just even Western, yeah. go as far as uh, Asia. Asia, that's the East, China, and we'll put all this together and infuse it into you know whatever we've created. But most importantly, our clothes most most times all reflect African origin. You see the Africanness in our that. designs. You both are twins. Has he been working as siblings? Oh, <laughs> you don't want to go there. Has he been working as siblings, baby? You, you don't want to go there. Uh, now, now, um, it's 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 crazy. If you can you can take a cue from uh, uh, the Peace Square, Peter and Paul. Okay, so it it it's some of those challenges we go to them too. You see, but again, maturity comes to play. You know, when it gets too tough, you know, one have to step down, step down, and okay, let it go, let it happen, just do. You know, so. It's been about, we thank God, you know, we have a balanced family from home, so it's okay. And again, well, I think, if I may say this myself, we're well raised by our parents, so there are some values or there are some morals that we cannot deviate from. There are some, we always come back how you were raised, think back what, you know, um, what you've been taught growing up. So you don't allow Western influence to affect your reasoning to affect you know how you deal especially when we have like a family business also so all right you know you know why i asked that question because we've seen a number of things happen even with couples with siblings and with twins in particular they've split twins that have been in partnership and over some time they just split because of one issue or the other how do you maintain this relationship in order to push your brand forward i think we Basically, because we're from a humble beginning, we're not born with any spoon at all. Mm. So uh, it's easy to reflect back from where you're coming from, and to see uh, if it's going to be worth it throwing away all you've built, so far. built just because of ego, because of a conflict. Mm. So it's easy to, it's easy for one person to lean back. And say, look, if we, if I continue, it's not like we don't fight, mm -hmm. my dear. We <laughs> fight, great deal. No, but it's not for one person to say, okay, um, what, what, um, what do I start to achieve? Holding on to this my opinion, holding on to. Let's go our separate ways. You see, because the Bible has always said. That one will chase a thousand, two will chase ten thousand. I can tell you that the Bible wasn't wrong, it was mistaken. Um, over time, we've learned to let go of our ego, let go of our differences, and pursue a common goal. Mm. A common goal is to build a Konye empire. It's mm. not Konye, mm. but actually, a common goal is to build an empire mm. from within. So, those things have kept us going for time. Alright, so last AM VCA. Yeah. Your outfit, you it was one of the best dressed. I mean okay. how do you feel about that? Yeah. Let me say a bit about it. And he will say, you see that that outfit was created in less than two weeks. Uh Uti has been our friend for a couple of years now we we had to start creating we had to create it from fresh he said i don't want anything that is on net anywhere in this world mm. you know That's so the, yeah so we, we started drawing and look at it look at it i think we drew more than 20 outfits wow. you know 20 designs you know but he was like no i saw this song this is like this this is like i don't want this so it took in less than two weeks we we're doing this back and forth back and forth, back and forth. But last minute we just got it. Okay, 
and we got a, we did a 3D view on it. it came out fabulous. He loved it. When we made the dress, we didn't even know that people are really going to like it that much. You know, we thank God. He loved it. He immediately saw it. We liked it, and we were surprised that so oh, it was picked among one of the best uh, dress male you know celebrities. I said, you know, I said our core values are core: competence, open-minded, integrity, and loyalty. Let me explain the open-mindedness. Now we are open to our customers' um, desires. Mm. We don't just create from space most of the time. Especially when we're having consultation with the client. We let the client to give us an idea of what they want. So that gives us a mirror or a window into their head to see at this time what has, what is this customer feeling? Yeah, okay. What would he like to wear? How would he like to be seen? So we're really, really open mind. We are not just stereotype that there are some creative people you can't adjust. You can't even you can't adjust, adjust your mindset. Yeah. This, these are my, I'm saying according to the, these are my pieces. These are the way I like you to wear them. So they, they usually put their whole idea, their inspiration on you, whether you're going to like it or not. So, but we are not that, we are not that stereotype. You are open to this suggestion. All right. So, what has been your worst moment so far in this journey, being an entrepreneur? As an entrepreneur, it has not been. That's bad. I don't want to tell you funding because funding is actually not the first um, decision you make when you want to go start into a new business. Start a, start a new business. Funding is not the first one. All right. You know when I was talking about the worst moment. So was there ever a time that you had a very big challenge, probably with a client, probably? You created a design and then it those, so those, those 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 are regular those come with those the, are come the, those the come with the, business. with the business entirely. That we've made clothes that you know that we have to take back. So you must have spent like your yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I said our first the first clothes we um, for a woman. The whole of them was, was returned. returned back. Wow. And yeah. the woman did not give us an option to adjust and no. She no. didn't like any of them. The whole every every dime we spent on that production was wasted. Every time, including we gave out the clues at the end of the day. So the is, that, is that why you focus more on creating? Initially, initially we were just men's wear. It was easy to relate because it's not only about designing the clothes. Mm. It's also understanding the uh, women. She didn't even not just that. Yeah, there were I think two of that women. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we do all that. So then it wasn't, it wasn't encouraging at all. No, they. I, I think we met the wrong type, you know, the wrong clients that time. So no one, no one encouraged it. Okay, so we had to drop it. Okay, till well, our hearts now grew bigger. To, to, you know, to see. <laughs> Trust me, you know. You know but but now we we are, we are cool we are we are okay you see making female clothes is a lot more difficult because you need to understand the accentuation of women body and good so now we have had all that put together and so we can easily understand how you know if a woman comes in size 12 in size 14 8 and all that so any if you make your size any little adjustment any adjustment could just be minimal how does Coin give back to the society? Do you do any form of corporate social responsibility? Well, like I, uh, I, I don't know he mentioned, I can't remember, but from day one, I would say we've been giving, giving back as a corporate opposition. It might not have been documented that this is what we do or this is what we mm -hmm. do, but the truth is that we, even if we even do something that we will not elaborate. But again, this is what we have done over time. There's a small island somewhere around this Ogudo. So we get young guys that are no do well. They are usually, uh, I won't say street good watchers. Drums. They are. They are like good drums, actually. Take them in from scratch. They don't even have 
home to and stay. We don't have home to stay. So we, we, we rented, you know, an apartment somewhere to put them, we train them, we feed them. Yeah. Just after three or four months, they become good. Train them as designers. You train them as designers, as tailors. As tailors, as tailors. tailors yeah. yeah. As tailors, yeah. Then, after you know, three or four months, wow. they are paying them salary. Yeah. Really nice one. A couple of them have gotten married, wow. started their homes. Started you know, their own fashion wow. businesses. Wow. All right, Mr. How has diversity and digitization helped in growing your brand? Okay. Uh, that's one regret that we, you know we have looking back when we started this uh, this brand the the social media space is not as it is now okay so we didn't have the opportunity to uh, to sell on social media put our work webs on websites and all over that okay so but today that's why anybody can start this um, start this fashion career and two three months they are everywhere okay so we've also tapped into that we have you know vibrant social media space uh, handles on facebook what uh, instagram our, our website is up on twitter and all that so we look advantage of like uh, this morning we shipped out clothes to america this morning i wouldn't and they're not even nigerians you get okay so and it's been like that for for a couple of years now we just get orders from all over saudi arabia you don't even imagine you know we've got orders from saudi arabia you get so that has helped every fashion designer today and we also we have also taken advantage of that too. okay for instance when we we go for fashion shows we tend to create clothes that are more western with just a touch of african influences on it it's more of the western appeal with backing of the what we basically sell what appeals to our clients are african clothes so i would say that in as much as we're doing shows most of those clothes are being bought by a much younger generation because they are usually more stylish more more um, uh, colorful okay. more appealing mm -hmm. To those category of people, I think it's that help really. If there is one advice that you have for youth out there, because I mean this this advice is very important because you need to let the people out there know that Yahoo is not Yahoo Yahoo is not waste the way. That there are guys that started from scratch, no connection. Because some people feel ah you need to have connection with one yeah. politician and also you need to advise them and tell them that they can as well start. There are people who have ideas. They don't know how to go about it. So you okay. need to let them know that you also started from somewhere before getting here. Okay. Mm -hmm. to the youth. Now, I will, I will say this. I will answer that question like this. Now, when I left the bank, I thought that, okay, I was sacked for non-performance, as it were, or rather advice to resign. So, but when I was leaving, I thought that, okay, I'm well armed because I was a marketer for the bank, so I had the clients. I had, I thought I was coming with a portfolio of clients which are going to migrate into Dan Royce and Rain and start making clothes for them. That was a fail. That was uh, a lie the devil told me. Now, the truth is that those people that you thought that would be waiting for you to come as a form of assistance or to come and help your business they are not there for you you can't bank on them you can't count on them so we basically as a business we started the business from scratch from zero no father no godfather no imported client no nobody around us the only contact we had were our parents and they were too old to move our clothes we weren't even wearing our clothes so what we only had going for us was that okay we were dogged we we're passionate about our clothes we we're passionate about our designs people we got the clients based on the quality of job we do the quality of the the how beautiful our clothes are 
are what actually attracted the clients to us. Anybody, any young man going out there trying to get into internet scam and all that, I would think that they are building castles in the air. I can tell you that I've experienced quite a lot of them. Some of my tailors then, that are even, not even the ones I train, the ones that I will hire to come and work. That is their night, that is their 7 to 5 a.m. job. And of course, I take time to even talk talk to them about it. And of course, they can't even lay their hands on such funds because at the end of the day, the money goes down the drain. So I don't see I don't see any future. That I said initially that you are building castles in the yes. air. You won't. So, so there is gain in hard work, mm. hard in work. patience, mm -hmm. following the process, doing the time. The time might take you as much as five years. If you can stay on a particular craft for five years and you don't make progress, you need to switch to another. It may not just be your calling. Okay, my advice to every youth you know, that's watching this interview and um, again, not everyone would be successful going through university, even though that is necessary. Okay, now, if you didn't have the opportunity to educate yourself, going through university, learn the craft, stay on it, I can tell you, you I think you already know that even the richest people on this earth, uh, some of them didn't go through the formal education, go through it, okay? But learn the craft, stay on it, be patient, be diligent, put in time, put in time. Uh, it will eventually pay out, you know, be dedicated, it will eventually pay. All right, you've said like a whole lot. Thank you very much. It was really insightful speaking with you today. Thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah. All right, people, thank you so much for joining us today. This is where we draw the curtains, and I'm sure you had a nice time listening to the CEOs of Konye Brand. For sponsorship and partnership, you can connect with us via social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And you can connect with us on our website at www.trepafrica.com. And that's it today on Trep Talk with Aaron Numi. Thank you so much. Bye for now. Trip Africa. Imagine more.